speak to you in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus tells his disciples that it's not what goes into the body that defiles. It's what comes out of the body that defiles. It's not what goes in, it's what comes out. And notice the order in which he says these things defile. The last thing he says is slander. And so he says these things defile. Fornication, murder, theft, all of those things. The usual suspects. And the last one, he says, is slander. Right on the heels of that, we have Jesus and his disciples walking, and they are being followed by a Canaanite woman. The Canaanite woman is shouting out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Heal my daughter. And the disciples, they say, boss, get rid of her bothering us. She's loud. Jesus reassures his disciples and says, look, don't even worry about her. I didn't come for the likes of her. I didn't come for the Canaanites. I came for Israel. The woman doesn't give up. She keeps going and she falls at the feet of Jesus and she says, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my daughter. And Jesus says, I didn't, I didn't come to give the food that belongs to the children to the dogs. And she says, yes, Lord. But even the dogs get the crumbs from the table. Slander. I didn't come to feed the dogs. I came to feed the lost children of the house of Israel. Now in a court of law, it might be difficult to prove slander because he doesn't technically call her a dog. But I think the inference is fairly clear. Canaanites and Jews did not get along. They didn't go to each other's parties. They didn't send each other cards. Canaanites, of course, worshipped the Baals, and it was their land that was given over to the ancient Hebrews. And so Jesus is doing what most Israelites would do in that situation. He's ignoring her, and then he's insulting her. But for a moment, let's say that he's not insulting her. Let's take that out of the equation. He still says no. He says, no, I will not heal your daughter. Jesus has never said no to anyone who comes to him for help. When somebody comes to Jesus for help, Jesus, help me see. Jesus, help me hear. Jesus, drive this demon out of my son. Jesus, heal my servant. Jesus always says, yes, I will do it. But this woman comes to him and says, Jesus, please drive the demon out of my daughter. And if nothing else, he says, no. I will not heal your daughter. What does she do? She doesn't leave. She stays there. She persists. She says, yes, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs from the table. She is talking to this ancient enemy of the Canaanites, the people who came into their land and took it over, the people who put to the sword everyone who wouldn't bend the knee to the one true God. They either killed them or they exiled them. This ancient enemy of the Canaanites who said that their one God was better than their pantheon of gods. She she falls to her knees and says, please heal my daughter. And all of a sudden, the power dynamic changes. And she moves from supplicant 
to the person in power. She bests Jesus in an argument. And Jesus says, Go, your faith has made your daughter well. This woman loves her daughter so much that she is willing to go after this stranger, this man she has only heard about, this ancient enemy of her people, and beg that he heal her daughter. She loves her daughter so much that when his cronies try to get rid of her, she persists. She still goes after him. This woman loves her daughter so much that when he says, no, I will not heal her daughter, your daughter, she still says, yes, Lord, but please. Her love drives her to debase herself in front of this stranger. But think of how she might have responded to her daughter having a demon. She didn't need to respond in love. She could have responded in anger. She could have responded in hate. She could have gone to her neighbors and said, can you believe the nerve of this Israelite walking through our land? Can you believe the nerve of this man refusing to help us? It is so easy to be angry. It's so easy to hate. It doesn't take much to get a crowd of people riled up in anger and hate. And the church is suffering for it because the people who hate and the people who are angry and the people who exclude have extremely loud voices. And they rile people up and they say, all of your troubles can be blamed on this person or these people or those people. Those people. They're the worst, right? Those people. Hate is so much easier than love. And hate has this immediate power to it, this immediate energy to it. Hate and anger feel justified. I hear people all the time talking about how the church is in decline. Of places that call themselves the church that are growing. And it's extremely worrying because they're not growing in love. They are growing in hate. They are growing by excluding others. They are growing by saying that these people are going to hell. They are growing using the language of fear. How do we, how do we work against this? We're not loud. This is as loud as I get during the week. Unless Archie has done something terrible. Which that happens periodically throughout the week. As I said at the 8 o'clock service, we like loud choral music. We like loud organ music. If you came in here on a Sunday and just saw a drum kit up here, how many of you would just leave? They've lost their minds. We don't do loud. We're not a loud people. We're not a loud denomination. It's not what we're known for. What are we known for? As much as anything, we're known for our love. And yes, it's imperfect. We are known for our love, for our inclusivity. We are known for wrestling with the hard things. We hear this gospel and we don't say, well, Jesus ignored her, so we should ignore people who ask for help. We don't hear this gospel and we say, Jesus insulted her, so we should insult people who ask for help. We hear this gospel and we say, Jesus said no, but she persisted. And so we too must persist in our message of love, in our message of healing, in our message of forgiveness. Every day, every day we must be able to say in our way that God loves us. That Jesus wants us. 
week after week, I talk about how difficult it is to love, and it is very difficult to love. Hate is so much easier. But hate is not fulfilling. Anger is tiring and depleting. Love is restorative. Love is healing. And so when we go out into the world and we hear people talking in a hateful way, in an unkind way, in an angry way, let us respond as we know best, quietly and in love. We can do this without being obnoxious. We can say, why do you think that is? We can say, how do you think that person got to where they are now? Why do you think they believe that? And we can remind them that Christ died for all people. That all of us are marked as his own forever. We can't let hate hijack the church. There are so many ways to respond to adversity, to hardship, to uncomfortable change. Let us respond in love, in kindness, in mercy. Let us respond in the grace that we were given. We are loved. Let us love in return. Amen.